Labino black folks and basically what we've got is a camera off of a squad car which basically for legal purposes I don't know if the local municipality calls themselves an academy for uh, the fact of but what we get is straight up uh, you can see the car lights on the tail lights hitting the squad cars deal and you can see the squad cars bumper and their idea that there is not red or anything flashing as you can see something squished down on our uh, Aurora pretty good okay uh, our, our uh, hemisphere our stratosphere the Aurora of Earth okay because we get red and and blue color and light from over here on this okay you know black folks and it seems like we pretty much have straight out got real footage of as you will see just a little bit of color and it's coming out of the sky on this here footage we got and it's caught off of a squad car and as you can see that it's not a flashing squad car over here or the lights off of the squad car now that's the object and then I'll scoot back down here if I can hopefully to show you the hood of the squad car and basically it's just over on the left hand side of the squad car as you can see the flash there did not and as you again here you will see that the flash is all from the, our stratosphere hemisphere we have a lot of spheres around earth ladies and gentlemen at different miles height okay and I've showed you that before and when I was showing you the data on the airplanes so if you go back to the data on the airplanes you'll see it and basically it's from it getting squished down from an object in space that was a lot closer and didn't get shown on Asgard because on the regular Asgard site if you go there it doesn't show this object okay and you can't miss the object and as you can see again on the hood of the vehicle that there is no and now we need to watch okay to see if there's make sure that no one's screwing around or spoofing at all you can see the vehicle and you can see uh, the the uh, that the idea that there's no blue when it's right there directly over the vehicle so let's check that again because we're gonna be getting a major uh, news company in trouble if it, there's BS going on on that okay so now it's directly okay yeah so there's no color on the hood there so see you can tell that it's not coming from cherries on the vehicle folks I mean we all know police vehicles and the cherries on top did not create that as you can see the arc and the impression now that little red mark up there and everything like that here is basically from this readout that's across the top where it says radar off and here it goes it's gonna play Okay, so it's all, and now that they have that matched up, I am not confirming that that's the matchup on the Asgard or any Fireball Network, and there is some in there in Texas that's not on the NASA Fireball. Okay, so it's be interesting to find the data on that because I do know that there, and that's what I'm interested in, somebody that they could throw the data on how close that this thing was because everything on Asgard on the NASA site doesn't show it that close but this would be scientific fact of what will happen to our aurora color wise as it comes anything would come close to our or skipping across our atmosphere i.e. there's been footage over in africa before of comet hitting and flashing on earth and so forth and so on and you get massive color okay so let's hit play again and basically you can see on the hood when it gets to that point there's really nothing there and it's all coming from over here and the other colors that you see before too is when this object first starts coming down because I basically have it set I believe I have it rolled just exactly where that yeah it'll catch it when you first see it come into the, the lowest portion that it gets and it does get lower going across the sky now whether this is one that actually ends up hitting the ground but you're getting a good example of what would happen with anything busting through, but it does look like it goes back up and away. So, and that's what we usually end up seeing from. So we have a nice, interesting scientific look here at the idea that our stratosphere, atmosphere, overall, because we have the hemisphere, there's all kinds of spheres of Earth, folks. There's layers, okay? 
So this is an interesting because, folks, no matter what, that is not the squad lights on the vehicle because you'd be seeing them as you just see them flash a little bit to the hood of the vehicle there, and it's out there to the right. So it's not, and everybody that's pretty much down there said they seen it. It was like flashing different colors, okay? Red and blue. I don't know if I've heard green. So I'll go to some of the statements and we can pull some of the statements down that people have seen of seeing it. But this is the best that we've caught. And basically it should be the camera catching it. And as you can see, it's not the cherries flashing because the idea you can see the lights of the car on the hood of the vehicle. Totally will disprove anybody's talking BS that the idea that it was the lights off the squad car and also that you can see the wave through the colors that flash, the red and blue. And it's very quickly also at pretty much more real speed because they have slowed this down to catch it, okay? And also it gets caught off the network, slowed down to catch it too. So unless someone's trying to pull a spoof, we've got some very good uh, proof and also the idea that it'll be interesting whether the Texas uh, All Sky is what basically has that that footage should be from. It's one of the one of the Texas All Skies, okay? So there's an All Sky network in Texas, like the Fireball, but it's called Texas All or All Sky, okay? So very interesting footage and. Like I say, I'll hit it one more time just so people understand that the idea that we do know that it's the object is, you know, positioned that we know that the lights off the car are on the hood but the, uh, from the vehicle in front, not from over top of head. And as you can also see that basically we just get a great view of the Aurora, which we normally see at the North and South Pole. And it's red and blue as we get something that squishes down very close and skips our atmosphere. Okay. So, it also showed in the previous videos the signature and stuff like that. So, the footage actually of this is way more dramatic. And you get to see our spheres, folks, our aurora, our, because we have way more than one layer of stratosphere, hemisphere, and there's a bunch of them. So, go back and look at one of my videos that has the data and they show you an airplane. And at the very end of that video, I've got information on, on the, the heights of all the stratospheres. So, very interesting footage. Now, this is the latest I can give you on H1A. Now, remember, folks, NASA colorizes this, okay, to get either that or this is actually an honest look of space then the idea they've always used this color but they also do the blue and the green and so forth and so on so this is just colorized here okay so we are getting also basically if you pay attention to my video before this we'll show you that basically that we're getting a big huge heartbeat of CMEs folks that means when the Sun is just CMEing and not flaring these massive CMEs it's becoming a massive heartbeat of them BAM bam in a certain amount of time in the day okay so this is the footage off and I believe this would be Mercury and it could be Mars but the idea of this since is H1A ahead uh, and I guess maybe I'll have time on this video to go ahead and, and look at the map okay but this is the newest footage I have there and then I'll go and show you B I think I showed it on one of the videos today hang on now here's B folks and what I want to show you is the idea that the massive uh, flashing of starlight also out there because if you watch over here below my cursor and I'm going to blow up to that area check out the cha-ching 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 of the stars in the constellation action out there okay let alone the uh, CME that is basically also the directions of these are you seeing because there's a huge one that keeps flowing right here on top and yes we know it flares in different spots all over the Sun folks but it's the massive size of all this that you can start understanding and realizing that what I've been telling you and it probably would be that some astronomers tell you that the idea that it's way more than just the sun that's putting these CMEs out. And more than likely, Rigel Cantaris A, or another one of the supergiants, is no matter what, even if it's just the sun, 
which it shouldn't be because of the massive size of this. Is this is all coming out of the supergiants, not just the sun, and the sun is in the supergiants, okay? It's in the supergiants' main sequence, okay? And with lasers, they get the... the all the shots triangulated in their data that comes back from this because remember just like I told you it's just like a scanner folks just like if you were sending a uh, fax okay that's how they get this electrical data down and then give these show basically end up with a picture and show the data okay and it's very very accurate and as you can see that I'm gonna blow that up so that we get some of that action of that star action coming up in that left hand upper corner because as you watch here, as we were seeing it on it smaller, that there is some awesome action of stars blinging and blinging. Now, maybe I need to slow it down since I'm at a, a higher resolution, maybe. But you could see it at the smaller resolution. And it is the CME action going out there. And there it is. You can see some of it here on these stars here check this out right there you see the lighting and in, in the the unlighting and just like flash bulbs going off on these stars right there below my cursor there so basically very interesting because it's showing up whether it's dark or bright and as you see, there's a planet that's getting flashed up here, too, that just starts coming into effect over here in the corner. Check that out. You see that? Watch this big C. That's a big planet. That would be something like the size of, uh, and then who knows how damn far it out is. That could be something like anything. Take your pick. I mean, that could be Jupiter or anything. And if it's the biggest thing that you can see, let me see if I can get that froze and get an idea. But to see these other ones, that, that's why I keep on saying is the idea that there's huge stuff out there. And the CME is making them look a little bit bigger because the camera's way the hell away from this thing, way the hell out. So that thing is making a CME reactive flare of its aurora, just like our Earth and so forth and so on, from the CMEs of the sun out there. As you see that it fences it and then it does that like we've been seeing from Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, and everything. Okay, And then whatever the heck that would be because that possibly could be, I'll have to go to the map and, and everything and figure that out. But as you see, that is a huge planet we catch just for a glimpse up there in the corner. So let me slow that down and see if I can get it down to a step. I'll be right back. So it's going to be a second again because I hit record and then it's, I slowed it down as much as I think I could get it to. I could also do step, but this just let it pop in and you'll have that planet. And then I'm going to hopefully pop out. I only have it at 400. Because basically all you're going to do is see star if I get up to zoom up more. So I'm going to pop to like 100 as soon as we see it come out. And you'll realize how big I'm saying that that is up there. And it's more than likely could be Mercury or Mars. And the idea that you should have seen the stars blinking again. As you see them blink, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Then there, there it was and I missed it. So I'm just going to plop down now to 100 so you can get the idea that how huge that must be because it's a big planet like one of these here. And basically we got like 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, and 6, and 7. So that's why the idea we put the pressure to them and basically they're starting to tell us about the other ones that are on our back door. And basically this is H1B. So let's go to the map on that real fast. And the idea that... Uh, Maybe I can step it up and get that so that you can see it full size. You should be able to see it there. there it comes into effect. Okay, I got it. So now I got it where I can freeze it. You see that planet up there? Oh, and then it went back. So then let's see if I can reverse it. And there it's there. And then let's pop back up to 400. And you can see the idea that you're going to have more conclusive evidence that that's all the supergiants and stuff like that, but folks, because that could be Jupiter. Very easily be Jupiter. Or that, you know, I'm just saying, I figured that could be Jupiter because we've got Venus down to the right that we should be able to see and so forth and so on. And then there's, so there's huge planets out there. And so you've got that because it doesn't matter how much more I blow that up. It's not really going to do much. I'll even do it for a second. You just see some more of a triangulation. That's all. Okay. Basically, you can see that B is here. And there's stereo A. So the one thing I want you to watch here is the corn or I. Earth going through space and going towards wherever we are at because we rotate towards the sun. As you see, that's the daylight side of Earth. 
And then this is the satellites that go around us. Modern technology finds.